in reference to deep relationships because what tends to happen i'm gonna tell y'all what tends to happen you choose and then spirit sends the person that you're really supposed to be with but you didn't already choose it already that's what that's what's going to absolutely happen and guess what's going to happen after that you're going to be a cheating ass person in your relationship because you chose the person that you were supposed to be with then why are you cheating and learn sidereo.com hoodmystic.com and colombianexchange.com from now until the end of january we are running a 50 percent off sale on select items and uh yeah so check us out colombian exchange that's exchange with an x.com check your um social feed and your um gmails and your emails we sent out a special email for those that subscribe to our newsletter or any of our email lists. We sent out a dope newsletter this morning. So if you signed up and you didn't see it in your email, just check your social or your promotion or possibly even your junk mail. And um, yeah, just feeling good, productive, doing a lot of studying, doing a lot of research. I got 30 minutes to get this message across. And the overall overarching theme of this message is the kingdom of a heaven is within you. That is a great responsibility for you and all of us. However, most people do not take advantage of this uh, responsibility and treasure because they ultimately imagine that the kingdom of heaven is outside of them in the form of a relationship, a bigger bank account, a bubble eye bends on a 20 inch rims. So I'm sending this message out to those who who may be feeling down or feeling difficult or feeling subdued or restrained or held back and really tying it into a waning quarter moon, which we'll be experiencing in Sidereo Libra. Now waning quarter moons represent external crisis waning no waxing quarter moons represent internal crisis now internal crises are easier to deal with because generally we can get ourselves in order we can get ourselves in line if need be however when you have an external crisis you have to throw your hands up essentially and surrender to whatever external circumstance is holding you back but the key is, since we're dealing with the moon in our subconscious mind and our deep thoughts, we accept the external block. The reason why you should do this gratefully and gracefully is because the kingdom of heaven is within you versus you being mad. Right. A person may say, I'm frustrated. I'm blocked. I can't do what I want to do, so forth and so on. However, that's just more of a concentration and a fixation with the external world. And um, unless unless you fucking Will Smith's kids, then you got to have some form of struggle. Right. So what are external limits? External limits represent the things that are unchangeable. And these are the things in life that no matter how much you love them, no matter how much you give ashe, no matter how much you pray, no matter what you do, you cannot change it, right? So this is a relationship that will not work out. This is a job opportunity that will not work out. When you accept the reality of it not working out, you begin to adjust your aura and your mind, and your thoughts, and your beings to what is really important. The worst thing that you can do this week is try to fix something that's broken. That's the worst thing you can do in reference to an external mind or external, I mean, a quarter moon, uh, 
in reference to your external limits, rather. Uh, when you think about preparing for a new moon, which is deeply personal, deeply internal, and really trying to figure out a direction for yourself, because there are a billion and one possibilities for a human being's life, you don't have to choose a specific thing, a relationship, a situation. You can move to a fucking town, any town, as long as you got the fucking security deposit and monthly fucking money, they'll move your ass in, right? In any fucking city or town in the country. So you're never limited. However, if you're fixated on a made up limit that you have on yourself, generally a relationship, a job or a city or something, family, even these types of things that, you know, the reality of an external limitation would be I cannot pray for this wall more than this wall prays for itself. The wall has to take care of itself. The person has to take care of itself. Your mother has to take care of herself. Your relationship has to take care of herself. Your kids, your city, your counselor, your mayor, your president, they all have to take care of yourself. So when you think about a human being, what is a human being's responsibility that we can unite under is really figuring out the kingdom being within and not only the kingdom as a abstract term, the kingdom of heaven. See, in the Bible, they literally tell you that you are a deeper aspect of the universe because I did a lecture uh, uh, an exclusive lecture with the mystery school titled one with the universe. And as I was preparing for this video call, I was then thinking of the Bible verse, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And then I said, Oh, that's what the fuck they were talking about. Literally every human being has the capacity of the universe within them. And this is the actual goal. So you honor and accept external limits and external barriers and redirect your focus and energy inward. <laughs> Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is within you. And you know that the kingdom is within you because you're not Will Smith's. You're not Willow. You're not Jaden. You're not Trey. Right. Your mom and dad was a fucking construction worker. Right. You know, regular shit. But that what makes you extremely important and special because it is known that the kingdom of heaven is within you. So what you'll notice is that the economic markets are going down. Right. So the value that people was talking about cryptocurrency, uh, the stock market, all of them niggas ain't really saying shit today because a large percentage of the money that they invested, they have their fingers crossed in reference to hopefully um, getting it back up. But this is a, a perfect time for you to invest in, do your research, do your knowledge, um, figure out some technical indicators, follow MSNBC, figure um, pay attention to like Joe Biden, stimulus, something of that nature, pounce on some shit, right? Get all your fucking vittles, right? Buy, you feel me? <laughs> because what we understand about reality and life is that it's cyclical. It never is going to crash, right? It can't crash because it's goddamn old white ladies living in the hills of fucking Illinois that, you know, they fucking comfort creature the fuck out and they will fucking shoot Joe Biden in the fucking neck if they got to fucking get out here and do something for real. So ain't nothing going to change as reference to the stock markets more than it's a perfect opportunity for you to take advantage of the perceived fear tactics, the same shit that happened in 2008, the same shit that happened in 2012, the same shit that happened in 2020. Um, you just have another market cycle. And if you understand these market cycles, you can even go ahead, get on fucking YouTube right now. Well, not right now. After this video, type in audio book, market cycles, summary and it's going to be a dope book it's going to be a five minute video that tell you what to do during these times so you don't take my word for it 
I'm just going through my notes. Hopefully y'all finding this information useful and utilizing a waning quarter moon as a serious time to do inner work and value who you are internally and the true value of understanding who you are internally. You have to really meditate and really focus on the fact that the kingdom of heaven is within you and it's your responsibility to maintain this kingdom of heaven that is within you or direct these particular thoughts to the fact that the kingdom of heaven is within you and the quarter moon actually gives you a wonderful opportunity so generally you you if you can you know pto uh vacation time things of that nature to really utilize get an airbnb get a hotel room make a trip in the northern part of your state where it's like fucking log cabins and skiing and all of that shit but of course you're really not worried about what's happening with the minutia day to day more than you are on trying to find inner alignment with the kingdom of heaven within yourself so working with the moon is about monitoring your emotions so you got to think about external unconscious energy basically how you feel about other people how you truly feel about other people is going to really have you stirred up emotionally in a way that really don't have to happen because why are you so concerned about what's happening in another person's life when you are not fucking Jaden? You are not fucking Willow. Your daddy worked at the fucking factory. So generally you got some fucking karma or some type of energy that's going to have to like work itself out. Right? You have to figure some shit out about life. Nobody is out here kicking their feet up. And if you are kicking your feet up, then you know my cash app is dollar sign hood mystic 38 you know you got to give 10 percent of your tithes and things of that nature if it's if it's that sweet for you because how is it that sweet for you and it ain't that sweet for me that don't make sense anyways um working with the moon is about monitoring your emotions so understanding your emotions outside of other people in circumstances and where you at in life you have to really sit with the concept that the world is meaningless, right? You have to really sit with this because you got to then think about a squirrel or think about a lion or think about any fucking species of animal on the fucking planet. None of them are as fucking crazy as human beings, but we all suffer from the same reality that every animal suffers from the elements, you know, fucking hormones, attacks from rival tribes, predators, prey, fucking group think, hyenas. Some of y'all look like fucking hyenas out here in these streets. It's fucking crazy. And y'all imagine that whatever you're thinking that you need to do has meaning to it, but that is completely tapped into your ego nothing matters until you get some form of true cognizance and understanding and reference to your consciousness. And this is a perfect time to solidify those thoughts as opposed to continuously confusing yourself by judging your, uh, by judging other people outside of yourself. So another flip on this is the moon is in Libra sidereally. So what you can begin to examine about your emotional capacity to judge others. Now, the reason that Libra represents the marriage because you ultimately have to judge the person that you're going to choose to spend the life, your whole life with. Because if you say, well, I'm gonna choose this person that's a hoe to be my wife or to be my husband, then you getting STDs, bitches knocking on your door at three o'clock in the morning and the nigga not even there. So you invite her in, y'all smoke a blunt together. Y'all realize that y'all got two kids by the nigga and y'all don't ever see the nigga none of the times. And she playing Inspector Gadget. She playing MacGyver and you just sitting there like, I don't even know what's happening uh, because you married a hoe.
you chose a hoe. Your judgment was off, my guy, my brother, my sister. Okay, so uh, these are times where you don't put your subject yourself to that type of energy more than you let things balance themselves out, right? You balance themselves out by not judging, by not choosing, by not imagining that you know what's best for yourself. As like, so you you can say, all right, what's best for you? And a girl would say like the dude that she's talking to, or a guy will say the best thing for me is this girl that I'm talking to, but none of y'all will say the fucking concrete paved roads. Like the roads is what's best for you. Fucking street lights, traffic lights, fucking street signs that say five miles to fucking the next exit. That's what's best for you. But you never say the best things for me is the fact that the engineers build the bridges over the road that allowed me to travel freely west and north to get to the place that I need to get to in a fast amount of time. You know what's made for you? Your fucking axle. Your fucking pistons, your fucking carburetor, your fucking glove box. That's what's made for you. Not the nigga that you think that's going to be the... Like, none of that shit matters. You, like, the whole world is made for you so you can enjoy it, but you don't appreciate it. You value your judgment. But this is what brings about the energies of mercy or harshness. Sometimes you choose good, sometimes you choose bad. But the reality is you should never choose in reference to deep relationships because what tends to happen, I'm gonna tell y'all what tends to happen, you choose. And then spirit sends the person that you're really supposed to be with, but you didn't already choose it already. That's what that's what's going to absolutely happen. And guess what's going to happen after that? You're going to be a cheating ass person in your relationship because you chose the person that you were supposed to be with. Then why are you cheating? Obviously, your judgment ain't right and exact and you don't know how to choose. You need to learn how to allow the universe to work in your work in your favor. And I'll give you another deeper understanding about the Libra moon, which is an Arcturian moon. Libra associated with Arcturius boots. And then the chakra for that is Swathi. Now, Swathi is translated into Swa and the. That's two, like um, too dope, too fly, too beautiful, too good. That's what Swathi means. So generally, you have a too good to be true type of energy that you don't need to make a decision off of because it's already good. And it's not regular good. It's already too good. So what is what are we additionally talking about? We're talking about our internal realization of the development of our spiritual self, which is forever in a day going to take. So we never reach a point of permanence. We never reach a point of destiny of achieving it. But what we can begin to do is share the reality of this divine kingdom of heaven spark within us to people who don't know shit about it. Right. That's kind of what we're here for. Um, so what you begin to do is appreciate your wealth. That's Swathi too. Appreciating your wealth. You might say, well, I'm not wealthy. That's not the proper energy. You're judging your ability to be in the moment. You're, you say I'm not wealthy today, but I'll be wealthy in the future. When is it going to be the future? Exactly. When is the day that a check is going to be mailed to your house that's going to end your prosperity woes? I'll help you out. It'll never happen. But you can magnetically, energetically align to that deeper reality of the prosperity that you're hoping to get right now. And you begin to direct those thoughts to the motor or to the generator of said miracle creator aspect of you the part of your being the moon the subconscious mind that keeps your heartbeat going that keeps your lungs expanding all of the things that's happened human give you your blood flowing fucking central nervous system you're not consciously in tune with the elements of your being your subconscious mind your moon that keeps you alive you think about dumb shit 
motherfuckers and sit back and you know i i was really confused about like after i got drunk for the first time why people even decided to even do that shit y'all ever got fucking drunk to the point you throwing up and pissing on yourself and shitting on yourself and you can't even move why would you think that that's some cool shit to do i never got that fucking drunk again nor have i wanted to fucking get drunk right but that's how stupid human beings are that they will think that like getting drunk is some cool shit and it's a positive experience that means that people don't even know how to think correctly um another aspect of this energy where you don't judge people you're not pushing you're not pointing out everybody's imperfections you're also becoming a leader and a visionary uh a, a, i mean shit it's like this is the sign or this is the fixed star of like people like Hitler and Trump and um, Mao Tse Singh, like, you know, um, fucking notorious rulers and dictators and shit like that. And the only reason that a motherfucker became a notorious dictator and ruler because he's seen the kingdom of heaven within himself. You don't get to be a fucking ruler of millions of people. Motherfuckers will talk about Hitler to this day because Hitler found the God within themselves. Now he decided to do what he did with it. But at the same time, if you can find that same amount of God level force within you, what the fuck would you do with it who knows right who knows but libra moon energy is dictator type energy is leader type energy is visionary type energy which is not an external direction of what you need to focus in in the world you got to go to president school or some shit like that it's about tuning in and tapping into the fact that what the kingdom of heaven is Within you, this is also a Bohemian star. Arcturus is a Bohemian star. So today, you can really get your rituals in alignment. The gemstone for this Bohemian star is Jasper, and the herb for this Bohemian star is Plantain. So we're also, you want to work with this fixed star to bring about new friendships in your life? You don't got to fucking choose them. They'll come to you, right? Because we're doing magic. We're doing real live magic. This is why I got my goddamn amethyst on right now. Bring some alignment in reference to this quarter moon. Deal with my inner fucking frayed ends. My goddamn split ends. <laughs> Do some healing on me. Lord Jesus. Tabernacle. Um, business success. And also good judgment. Generally... You want to do rituals and spells and magic for good judgment. You don't just want to say, I can judge correctly. Because I heard somebody say that when I choose a wife, he got to be attractive. As if being attractive mean that he don't fucking fart um, 28 times a day, right? He got a fucking flatulence problem, but he fucking attractive. That don't even make no sense, right? But people really be feeling like the external is their indicator for making positive choices because their boyfriends look halfway decent but then their boyfriends cheat on them and leave them for other girls uh, so i'm gonna close this out because we had 20 minutes and i need to get this video done in 30 minutes i'm on a 30 minute break uh in reference to the work that i'm doing uh but i want to flip it into more of a spiritual esoteric uh meditative contemplative understanding of the fact if you're watching this video that the kingdom of heaven is specifically within you and as i say that i really want you to meditate and contemplate on the concept of the kingdom of all of heaven like the kingdom the throne the castle uh the moat the guards right the fucking everything that's happening within the kingdom, right, is happening within you, okay? In heaven, 
the celestial court, the 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 place of the procession of the equinoxes, the 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 equator, the tropic of Cancer, Capricorn, everything that you can imagine as far as celestial compositions is within you. This is how you're able to think. This is how you're able to build a building and a fucking squirrel is around here chasing nuts. Now you have a, a very powerful energy that is within you. And the issue is whether you are specifically focusing on the aspect of the universe that is within you. These are your gifts. These are your talents. And outside of this, you need not to fear. Okay. If you can, if you can first identify the fact that kingdom of heaven is within you, then we move into another phase of fear. Okay. Uh, there is no death. There is no ending. There is only change. We change in forms. Okay. When you think about the manifestations in your life, they have to be cultivated. Let's bring the I let's bring into the ideology of a seed sower. Okay. You are a seed sower. You sow 50,000 seeds in a day. Now, some of those seeds are bullshit and you know they're bullshit, but you're a seed sower, okay? You need not worry about your bullshit seeds, right? You need worry about the seeds that you're wishing to cultivate and grow into manifestation. And you sow these seeds upon the kingdom in heaven because the kingdom of heaven also has a garden associated with it that exists within you. This is some real live shit that... I can't begin to express to you how real it is when you begin to direct your thoughts inwardly, but not in the space of trauma, hurt, danger, you know, negative energy. I'm going to tell you all the truth about my day. I woke up and intuitively I bought a whole bunch of shadow work journals that's going to be sent in, in a couple of weeks. I don't know why I bought all of the books that I, that I bought, but I bought a bunch of them because I felt that I bunch of people is going to buy them and i say you should buy them because they half off what they 15 dollars now you get them for 50 percent off that's seven dollars you feel me but i feel as though if you go within yourself and it's a dark place it's a tormentuous place it's the shit that happened to you when you were seven years old it's the it's the inner thoughts of how you unlovable how you don't love yourself how you don't like yourself and all of these particular to you know tormentuous thoughts that people hold within themselves, then that's the indication that you might have to do shadow work and don't sleep on journaling. What happens when you journal is that you release those negative thoughts that you have. And once you release those thoughts that you have, you no longer have them. You no longer are cultivating that particular seed within the garden of the kingdom of heaven. See, the reality of this kingdom of heaven is that you have been inserted and been implanted false ideas in reference to who you are because the person that was implanting you the person that was telling you didn't know who they were it was as if the blind was leading the blind and the reality is it's up to you to take off your blindfolds but the deeper reality of your blindfolds is that they go inward the same way as what we see gets transferred in the back of our minds we begin to see from the back of our minds. And as we begin to program what we see in the back of our minds, it begins to create that which we see on the external. That's exactly how it works. Plato told you this in his, in his allegory of the cave. Everything that you see on the external is a result of shadow work, but not the shadow work that you're doing. We're doing shadow work inwardly so we can begin to see in that occipitable lobe. But the reality of this matrix is that we get to program it. We are an integral part in of it. There is nothing in this universe is not for you. The planes is for you. The hotel rooms is for you. You ain't never went to a hotel room and gave them your fucking ID and credit card. And they said, no, you can't bring your ass up in here because you have low grade quality of energy to be in this fucking hotel room. Nobody ever told you that. Nobody, you ain't never bought a first class ticket and motherfuckers looked at you and said, you know what? You don't, you don't need to be here in this fucking first class seat. 
motherfucker. If you bought the ticket, you deserve it, okay? So in reference to you not getting your money up, then that's a whole nother problem, okay? <laughs> so what we're, what we're then talking about, uh, I want you to close it out. We're thinking about thoughts, but we also understand that our thoughts have like, so the thought is the train. What do they call it? A train of thought. Now, what is the passenger on that particular train of thought? It is the emotions. So generally you have a destination and then you have the travelers that want to get to that destination. You being the ultimate conductor of your life, correct? You are the conductor of your life. You have to determine the destination and the emotions associated with that destination. And and it might be some risk associated. It might be um, some initiation associated. But you have to say that you are going in a specific direction. You have a specific goal. You have a specific target. And once you begin to set that alignment and destination, this is inner work then the emotions associated with that particular thing. And trust me, I'm not saying that you're going to feel good about it all the time. It might be a little scary. It might be a little negative emotions to indicate that you are on the right path, right? Because you ultimately have things to work through and you got to really begin to acknowledge the beauty of your negative emotions that allow you to start clearing up karmic situations. If it don't feel right and you subject yourself to it, you then got to ask yourself, why are you subjecting yourself to things that don't feel good? Now you begin to make changes and now you're in a better situation. That's a psychic power that you don't be utilizing or you be or acknowledging. Right. So when you're setting plans and you're moving in your plans, you're also meeting and greeting with your passengers on your train of thought. And these are your emotions, your thoughts and your emotions. They're like kissing cousins. So when you think about, well, this bitch don't deserve the shit that she got. He don't deserve what he got. I don't agree with him. I don't like him. He too fat. He too ugly. I need to have more subscribers than her. I'm way more prettier than her. I got way more muscles than him. You know, I speak way more clearer than him. This motherfucker read at a seventh grade level. You damn right I read at a seventh grade level. So I feel great about it. You read like a fucking expert and don't nobody want to fucking hear you read. Now what? You know? So uh, it's very important to direct your thoughts inward because you can speak with a fucking slur. You can walk with a fucking fucking limp. <laughs> you can be seven times uglier. But if you believe in yourself and you direct yourselves to the energies or the destinations that you want to get to, there's nobody to stop you. And, and on the path to becoming... It was people who did not have positive uh, ashe for your boy. Never once did they ever stop me from me getting to where I'm trying to get to in life. So, I, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate what they say. If you don't got haters, you ain't doing something right. I'm paraphrasing. Okay. So when you direct your thoughts, if you're not sure, if you're not clear, you don't know what it is that you want to do. You're not 100% clear on shit and you know you're not 100% clear on shit. It's perfectly fine to direct your thoughts to the fact that the kingdom of heaven is within you. Google the Bible verse because I'm not making it up. Meditate on it. Don't give up the thought. Sit with your fucking self because if you say, well, you know what, hood, fuck the fact. I think that I need to fuck with this nigga, though, because he kind of cute. Um, the kingdom of heaven is you said what again? You said the kingdom of heaven is with that nigga across this. No. <laughs> oh, you said it's within me, within me specifically like me. You know, like me, like, yes, motherfucker, you. And if you don't fully agree with it, then you're going to deal with bouts of fucking depression, negative energies, negative behaviors, destructive behaviors, destructive thoughts, destructive emotions, destructive actions, because you don't even know how important you are to the whole celestial integrity of the universe. And there's very simple things that I could that I could pinpoint to a deeper reality that you are a universal figure that we all should be paying attention to. But as much as I could expend on how great you are, I'm going to save that for you. I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> I'm going to let you love on yourself 
and, and, and understand the kingdom is within you, right? Because I've, I, I mean, I figured it out within myself, but part of figuring it out is sharing, right? That's another part of it. So the only way that I know that you have figured it out is when I see you sharing freely and openly and um, stepping out of your comfort zone and um, putting the mic up into your face and the camera in your beautiful face so I can look at you and say how cute you is and things of that nature. But with all that being said, that was my 30 minutes. My time is up. I'm about to get back to work and hopefully you are too because the work never ends. You feel me? We got to run them checks up. You feel me? Um, um, you should be doing deposits every day, one way or another. You know what I'm saying? Only fans, only scams, something. You feel me? I'll see y'all on the flip side, though. Peace.